and welcome to another episode of We're Not Wizards. My name's Richard, I shall be your host for today or this evening or the morning, whenever you're listening, because after all, it's your podcast. Um, Joining me today is a gentleman who we've been kind of talking back and back and forward for a little while now and in fact back in the days when me and Colin were used to do our segment about giving it a kick it was one of the games that we kind of mentioned that game at the time was called Kill the King the company in question is Tompet Games and the gentleman behind it all is Peter Skanko Olsen so, hello, Peter. Hello. <laughs> you managed to say my name uh, very perfect. So, uh, <laughs> very good. That's okay. As I yeah. say, I think it's, I, I checked it <laughs> before, yeah. that. and it's lucky I did. Otherwise, I would have been making a right, um, a right fool out of myself. Yeah. Um, thank you for coming on. Um, yeah. As thank I you for say, me. we've been, um, we have kind of talked back and forward for a while. Um, we have well. I'm aware of yourself through Kill the King, the first Kickstarter that you did, which yep. uh, funded well. Your next one, which is coming up, which is going to be called Donning the Pur- Purple, which we're going to talk about. Um, also, we're, we want to have a talk about all these lovely interviews that you're doing with all these people, which is making me extremely, extremely jealous. Um <laughs> I think the first thing we need to do is to say hello to everybody out there who's listening. Um, tonight we have um, a selection of hot chocolates, marshmallows, and there's also some uh, bacon sandwiches on the side if you want to help yourself. The reason that we do this is because, well, there's not enough podcasts out there about board games. And the second reason that we're doing this is because... Um, Peter's got a Kickstarter coming up um, in the foreseeable future over the next couple of months Mm -hmm. and his first one was did really well so I've, you know, I'm aware how you go about killing the king but I'm interested in how you go about donning the purple but first of all (laughs) we'd like to know a little bit about your history so um, we want to have a little peek back in the past, we want to have a little uh, stare at the present and we want to have a little um high high into the future <laughs> so um do you want yeah do you want to start off by telling us kind of like a little bit about how you got you know how you got into the hobby how you got into kind of like tabletop board gaming things like that Peter? yeah sure um i uh, i have always been playing games uh, as far as i can remember i played a lot of monopoly back in the day when i was a kid Mm-hmm. Uh, and I um, like that. I was a. Uh, uh, I, I really like. Uh, I'm, I, I, was, I was a bit uh, capitalistic when I was uh, a kid. <laughs> I liked. Okay. Uh, I liked uh, um, uh, all games with, uh, with paper money, and um, and I felt rich when I played them. Uh, I, w- okay. I wasn't that rich, uh, unfortunately, but um, yeah, it was a, it was a good thing. <laughs> okay. Yeah, uh, uh, and and I al- I also played uh, a lot of card games with my grandparents. Uh, All right. They taught me a, a quite obscure and complex card game called uh, Canasta. Do uh, have you heard of it? Yeah, I've heard of Canasta. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's right <laughs> up, right up there in terms of uh, difficult things you can do with a fifty-two deck of cards. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's amazing how how difficult it is. Uh, I re- remember when I was trying to teach someone the game, they just st- looked uh, looked strange at me and. <laughs> It was it was almost like I was uh, just inventing rules as I uh, was uh, <laughs> playing along because it, there are so many random rules there. If you have uh, uh, so many three uh, red threes, uh, you can you get the bonus point there, and yeah, it's 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 strange. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like what would you prefer, canasta or learning Twilight Imperium? And people yeah. are like, oh, I'll, 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 I'll have. Twilight Imperium. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, very, thank you so, very, very much. Yeah. When you play Monopoly, mm-hmm. is I take it it's all based around is Norwegian cities and places like that. Do you have like the you'll have like the go to jail section and you have the train stations? Is it pretty much to set out the standard Monopoly just with kind of like different place names? Yeah. Are they yeah. all? Are they all are they all based around kind of like um, kind of famous places in Oslo, or is it a particular city that they 
They based on mine? Yeah, they yeah, actually the the old game was called Monopoly, but in uh, the game that I played the most was uh, a new version of it, uh, and it was called uh, Millionaire, uh, and it's oh, right. it's basically okay. the, the same concept, but. Uh, as you said, it's uh, with the uh, with the uh, street names from uh, Oslo. All right. Okay. And okay. instead of trains, it's um, uh, it's uh, it's it's boats. I uh, I think I don't All remember. Right. Yeah, yeah, boats. Yeah. Okay. Mm. And, and 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 there there was also a, a rip off of the of Millionaire uh, uh, that was called uh, the Trondheim game. I'm from All the right. city of Trondheim in the middle of Norway. And that yeah. was uh, almost the same thing, but just with the uh, with the street names uh, or company names from uh, uh, the city where I'm uh, in, and it it was it was quite uh, quite harsh because one of the one of the uh, the chance cards uh, mm. uh, uh, you can you could draw it was uh, you you just lose the game. <laughs> 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 just like that. Yeah. Just to go home. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was. It was quite uh, bad to to get that the card when you when when you were just a kid and uh, uh. you get slapped that in the face. So yeah, it it was it was a rough uh, rough time growing up here in Trondheim. <laughs> was it? Did you have you got brothers and sisters that you grew up with, or was it just yourself? Uh, no, I I, yeah, I got a sister, but uh, I, I played uh, the uh, these kind of games with uh, my friends. Uh, for the most ah, part. Yeah. Okay. 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 So your grandparents were teaching you kind of like canasta and I, I guess poker and <laughs> no <laughs> blackjack. No, we 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 weren't allowed to play poker <laughs> at, at their house. <laughs> you can imagine that. Yeah. Can you imagine. No, yeah, I but... used to. Yeah, I played dominoes with my grandfather, and he always used to take us for money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what um did you? carry on kind of playing all the way through or did you kind of take a break and education and stuff kind of got in the way or what was yeah, your what was I, your journey kind of after that yeah i i pretty much played uh, magic uh, on and off again for about 15 years uh and i uh of course i discovered beer <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> when I was uh, studying, so so I uh, had a, a little board game break for a couple of years there. Mm-hmm. But then I uh, settled down with a wife and a dog and uh, my daughter, and uh, then I uh, re- rediscovered uh, board gaming again with the, the usual gateway games with the Settlers and Dominion, and uh, and I was hooked again. So uh, that's uh, perhaps uh, three or four years now. Yeah, and mm. I have. Uh, uh, I'm uh, fair, uh, rarely playing any computer games uh, anymore because I'm uh, either playing board games or uh, developing board games. So uh, it's uh, board games has been uh, been my new hobby now for yeah for th- 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 uh, three or four years. Um, do you? I mean, do you have a regular group that you kind of play with then? Yeah, uh, I have, uh, but uh, uh, all my friends are, uh, or most of my friends are, are just. Uh, having their uh, uh, first baby born, uh, uh, oh, right, okay. so, so uh, it was uh, it was a little bit funny because uh, me, uh, me and my wife and a friend and his wife were mm-hmm. just we were pregnant uh, at the same time and we were playing uh, a Pandemic Legacy. Uh, <laughs> so we had to really hurry and play <laughs> play through all the all the year before we <laughs> gave birth. <laughs> so it was like a time scale because most people that have found when they've been playing Pandemic Legacy, it's like they're almost like they're playing like a month, a kind of a month. Yeah. So you basically, <laughs> yeah, you, we, we, you, you, yeah, we had three or four sessions where we played six hours straight. <laughs> really? Yeah. So uh, that was uh, I, w- when. Uh, uh, me and my friend were was so happy because we uh, we were outside and uh, and our our wives were uh, inside the, uh, playing uh, or, or setting up the game and they, they told us to hurry because they wanted to play and then we we were we knew that we were had uh, had found our uh, matches uh, in, <laughs> in in partners uh, that uh, they uh, enjoy board games so much uh, as well as uh, not not as much as we are but uh, they want to play uh, games a lot so that that's a good thing. So do you have do you have quite a a decent collection of games then? Uh, no, sadly no. I uh, only have perhaps twenty or thirty games. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sadly, <Yeah. laughs> but but luckily I I have friends that have uh, hundreds of oh, games. So I dear. I uh, I, uh, 
I uh, go, go to their pl- place and, and play a lot of games. When I'm that's a sa- that is a s- that is that is just so typical of a board gamer. Yeah, it's like, do you have a big collection? No, I don't. I only have twenty or thirty yeah. <laughs> games. But some of my friends, they have a better collection. They've got hundreds. It's like, I don't think. I suppose even video games. Maybe you have about 20, 30 games, but you usually kind of swap them in and out yeah. and change them. You know, it's like, I've got... How many golf clubs you got? <laughs> <laughs> i got about 30, but I know a friend who's got a couple of hundred. I mean, it's the only hobby where <laughs> by having... You know, you could be considered like almost like... Um, you're not a serious board gamer, though, and if you've only got 20 or, no. or 30 <laughs> board games. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh- is there any reason for that? Is that because is that because uh, Mrs. Olson has put her foot down and said no, you can't have any more? Is it just space? Yeah, I think it's a combination uh, because yeah. uh, the the really sad part or or the good part is uh, that uh, the board games are are uh, in, in the room of my daughter and she's only ah. a couple. Of, uh, she is not. Uh, uh, she's uh, five months now, so uh, oh, wow. <laughs> eventually I have to replace my board games with. Uh, her stuff <laughs> so yeah that's life can you not just kind of I guess teach her how to play Catan when she's six or seven months old yeah I I have, I have put up a plan of uh, all the war games I'm going to take it through so. <laughs> <laughs> but but my biggest problem is that I only have uh, 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 perhaps fifty percent of uh, my games are Axis and Allies and really heavy right. <laughs> strategic games. So uh, I have to <laughs> teach her quick to, to to reach that level. Well, I mean that's you, what you're going to have to do. There's kind of you're going to have to teach her um, how to talk. You're going to yeah. have to teach her how to walk. You're then going to have to teach her how to use a. Uh, um, a left flank attacking maneuver in yeah. order to take the <laughs> in order to take the site, you know, to take down an opposing army. I mean, that's probably just before she moves on to kind of eating solid food. Yeah, I would think <laughs> kind of board game attack and defense tactics will be right there, kind of in kind of right there in the kind of the middle. Basically, I would I would think. Yeah. Um, so, what kind of games? I mean, what kind of games are you playing at the moment? Because you you quite quite heavy into the kind of the tactical the tactical war game side of things. Then is that yeah. str- is that kind of what you like? Yeah. Yeah, I, I can play pretty much anything except uh, two light party games like uh, Cards mm. Against Humanity. I'm not a f- fan of that. Uh, I, I I I respect people who play them, but <laughs> but I, <laughs> I I'm not playing them too much myself. But uh, I I prefer games that take. The, the longer the better uh, almost because uh, if if you if you are playing uh, let's say a 6 hour game of access and allies so you have to really uh, be inside the game and every decision matters because if you just uh, take a decision lightly and uh, you screw up the whole thing you have just thrown away uh, so many hours so we have to be really focused when you play um and I really like that because if you are playing just fifteen minute filler game, you you don't care about uh, what you're doing almost because you you know that the game is all, uh, only going to last uh, for uh, for a few moments. So uh, I really like to to have uh, <laughs> meaningful uh, decisions when I uh, play games. But uh, I I also like uh, uh, smaller games that can take uh, take up to. Uh, um, an hour uh, only, but I I really like the strategic uh, games and not too uh, abstract. I like to have a concrete uh, theme uh, mm-hmm. and uh, and preferably uh, uh, historic uh, theme. Uh, I really like that. So uh, yeah. So do you play games like Command and Colors? You uh, no, I haven't actually. I think. Yeah, I, I I haven't heard about that actually, but I I, I play uh, Axis and Allies, and I also play a bit of uh, miniature games, uh, Flame to War. All right. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, and I played uh, a, a, um, a war game called uh, the Battle for Norway. Uh, it's a Norwegian right. uh, okay. game about uh, the uh, uh, when uh, Germany invaded Norway, and that's uh-huh. uh, really cool. Uh, 
And uh, yeah, the as I say, the more complex, the, the better. <laughs> So do you like, is happiness for you kind of like a, a big table with a couple of huge rule books, a pile of miniatures and dice and yeah. just kind of going kind of head to head? Yeah. Yeah. What, yeah. What's the kind of the most, what's the most recent thing that you've bought or recently that you what? are really enjoying? Or what are you what are you kind of playing at the moment that you're really, really kind of enjoying that's quite new for you? Yeah, uh, I, I just got back from Essen. And I uh, <laughs> and I brought, bought some games there. I bought uh, Agra, if you ever heard of that. I think it's a fairly new game. Uh-huh. Uh, it, it's uh, Indian themed from. Um, uh, I think. Yeah. Uh, well, well, I I just passed it when I was walking in in the mess uh, in in the game hall, and yeah. uh, and it has a really big map. I I love uh, games with uh, big maps. <laughs> uh, and and they have small counters and all of that, so I just had to to do do some more research, and uh, the the price wasn't yeah it it was a bit heavy, but <laughs> but uh, I uh, I I uh, uh, had some r- room in my in my briefcase, so I just that was my wait it was the last game I bought, and I th- I think the complexity level uh, on Board Game Geek on that game was four point five or something. Okay. Uh, we're, we're f- <laughs> five is the <laughs> is, is the top. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, I'm uh, <laughs> looking forward to dive into that. <laughs> <laughs> did you? So did you manage to resist kind of buying lots and lots and lots of games from Essen then? <laughs> yeah, it 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 was it was really hard uh, because <laughs> as as I say, I I really like uh, and. Uh, uh, games with uh, maps. So every you know, time I uh, walked past a game that had a big map and small counters, <laughs> it was it was really hard. <laughs> Did you get your little eyes went? Ooh, I yeah. can have this. Was your was your um, was your wife with you when you were at Essen then, or was she was she back at home? No, she she was back home with the with the baby. All right. <laughs> So it was it was the first time uh, in five months that I <laughs> could oh my could, could do, do this full time for uh, four days. That was uh, quite quite fun. <laughs> did she? So did you get like a budget? She goes, okay, here's your money. Here you go. Here's your money for your travel. Here's your money for petrol for the car you travel. <laughs> here's your money for your lunches, and here's your money for your um, for your games. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, I I, uh, I I knew that I have to be restrainful because uh, yeah. I, uh, my uh, my gaming collection is uh, or or, or uh, my my game closet is is full and uh, <laughs> <laughs> be fairly obvious. Yeah, you so have I to have... put it under the cot or you put put it under your bed or yeah. So I so I only I only bought seven games or something like that. It was uh, and Agra was. Uh, the heaviest, and then I bought uh, Anachrony. Uh, oh yes, yes. Yeah. And yes. and uh, and this War of Mine. So th- these were the three big yes. boxes, and then uh, some yeah. some few few, uh, few smaller boxes like uh, Import Export. If I heard of that, the name rings a bell. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it, it was it was hard. So ne- next next year I will uh, dig a hole in my in my base and basement. <laughs> to, so I can fit more games. Okay. You just your wife's gonna come back home from work or whatever, and you're gonna be banging away at the side of the house. She goes, yeah. "What are you doing? I'm just building an extension, darling." It's like, "Oh, is that for our daughter?" No, no, no. It's, <laughs> it's for it's for the cardboard. Mm-hmm. And that you're gonna. Ha- I'd love to hear later on what you think of an when yeah. you get a chance to play it because um, I heard the guys on. Polyhedron Collider, Steve and Steve and Andy and and John, mm-hmm. who's my favourite. Um, <laughs> they they kind of waxed lyrical about it. They said they kind of had a lot had a lot of fun with it because you basically, what did they say was it was really interesting that you basically you could use resources that you didn't have, but you had to make sure that you had them in the future to be able to send them back through, kind of through time. Which yeah. sounded absolutely kind of amazing. Um, they also actually spoke about this war as mine as well, which they've said is um is a it's um it's a bit dark. Yeah. <laughs> in terms of how it goes, but um, they said what did they say? They say it's not it's not a game you would crack open if you were wanting to have some fun. No. They say it's a bit, <laughs> it's a bit of a it's a bit of a 
It's a bit of a kind of a bit of a kind of a dark game. Um, <clears throat> so I mean, I, I get our games. I don't know. I'm not sure about the infrastructure because obviously I'm not sure about the infrastructure in kind of Norway in terms of getting hold of of uh, new games. Is it is it quite easy to get hold of the latest kind of car the latest kind of cardboard and things like that? Is that quite an easy thing to do? Is it a bit more difficult? Um, yeah, it, it it depends on where you live. I live in uh, 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 the third biggest uh, town in Norway, and we have uh, uh, one big uh, good uh, game uh, board game shop, and uh, oh, right. okay. a, a, and um, and there's some some of the uh, some other uh, stores that have some some uh, board games like the more family friendly board games, but uh, yeah. But you can we can also order online and stuff, so there, that's no no problem. Yeah. Okay. 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 That's cool. That's cool. What made you um, what made you to de- decide to go from kind of playing the heavy games to kind of des- designing them yourself? I mean, because because to kill the king that was was that last year now that you yeah you did it was it you. Yeah, it was you la- ran last, the last, of, last September. Yeah, last September, but you you delivered it by was it f- January February of the following year. It was a yeah. very very quick turnaround. Yeah. I mean, what um, <clears throat> what inspired you to pick up the I guess the, to kind of pick up the white pieces of paper and start designing something yourself. Yeah, uh, I uh, by by day I'm I'm working in the film industry in in Norway, so I like to uh, create stuff. Uh, and uh, when I got back into board gaming, I uh, uh, just played around with the thought of perhaps creating my own own game, but I didn't mm-hmm. have any any ideas to to how I could do it. But um, but suddenly uh, uh, on Christmas Eve, when I was standing in the shower. Not not on the Christmas, <laughs> not not nothing Christmas Eve, but Christmas morning. <laughs> yeah, and then I and then I uh, just uh, was a, th- uh, uh, a thought just popped into my head about uh, some some flanking maneuver uh, thing. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I guess you also think about that in the shower, don't you? No, no, no. Oh, there's no flanking maneuvers when I'm having a shower. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and and then I ju- uh, c- continued to think about that flanking maneuver, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> I really don't know what to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then right, okay, so <laughs> and then you right, okay, so you had your flanking maneuver in the yeah. shower. Yeah, and then I and then, then I and then I went out of the shower. <laughs> okay. I hope and, you dried off. Yeah, and um, I did all the necessary things there, and, and then I <laughs> ran up uh, upstairs and and grabbed the the closest piece of uh, paper I could grab, find and just uh, <laughs> drew some uh, squares and numbers and uh, and stuff, and um, and I forced my my sister who, who was uh, the closest <laughs> person uh, at the moment to to play the pr- prototype. And yeah. she's not, and she is not a not, not a gamer, so uh, uh-huh. she was a bit relentful at at uh, at the beginning. But uh, as as we played the first prototype, she she actually had to to admit that maybe I was into something. Um, All right. Okay. Yeah, and and then uh, I just continued to develop that uh, that game, uh, and that turned out to be Kill the King eventually. Okay. Okay. Was there? Was there quite a difference between the? I guess it probably was quite a difference between the first ones. I take it the first version was, <laughs> the second version wasn't as wet as the first. No. Version. <laughs> 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 yeah, second version was smudged. Um, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, it 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 was quite a a journey from a, a wet. With thought, if 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 I can <laughs> call it that, <laughs> and, until until a, a cardboard uh, prototype, yeah. <laughs> I mean the, I mean I'm just, I mean it was the turnaround because you was it when you were designing this when you were you kept on obviously the cardboard counters and everything like that. When you were designing it, was there a temptation to? kind of go down the lines of making kind of miniatures, making the the castle a bit more solid, you know, was there that kind of temptation at the time or were you quite focused on saying well I want to keep this as kind of as simple 
and as pure as possible. Because looking at looking at the game, it was a very simple on the outset, anyway. It was a very very simple kind of setup. You had like a nice board, and then you had your um, your game board, which was quite simple, and then you had your units, your your attacking units, your defending units. You had kind of like broken wall indicators, and you had one dice, a single yeah. six-sided <laughs> dice. Was that was that budget, or was that more a case of you playing Axis and Allies so often? You were kind of used to using very simplistic pieces to represent kind of maneuvers and stuff. Uh, yeah, uh, m- maybe we should. I should just tell what uh, the concept of the game uh, yeah, was. Yeah. yeah. So, so Kill the King is uh, is a medieval based game where for two players, uh, where one player is attacking uh, a castle, uh, and the other player is uh, defending the uh, the castle. And inside the castle, there is a king that the other player wants to kill, uh, and that's the the meat of the game actually. And uh, uh, we have uh, several. Uh, units that uh, they can choose from and um, uh, that they buy at the beginning and, and stuff. Uh, you can uh, uh, normal units like uh, archers and uh, knights and uh, a bit more uh, special units like uh, siege towers and uh, burning mm. pigs. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, you've yeah. got archers, you've got spearmen, you had catapults. Yeah, and um, the, and the, and the stretch goal. One of the stretch goals was uh, burning pigs. So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we got that, <laughs> but that actually, that actually happened. It was uh, actually uh, the the Romans used to <laughs> to to have pigs uh, drink oil, and uh, yeah, it was uh, I, not, I, not good. I don't know whether to believe you or I just <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, I I had to look it up before I actually put it in the game. Oh, so yeah. Wow. I suppose <laughs> afterwards you could have always eaten the pigs. Yeah, and yeah. you would have had a lovely, a kind of a lovely. <laughs> Yeah. Lovely snack. <laughs> you didn't need any cooking oil, so <laughs> no, exactly. All you didn't need would have been two massively huge slices of bread. Yeah, and you could kind of put them. You could kind of put them either side. Yeah. of the <laughs> of this thing that was sitting there. I mean, um, <clears throat> it did. It did well. Yeah, uh, uh, to, to answer your your question, it was very tempting uh, at the beginning to have miniatures and uh, more stuff, more complex yeah. stuff in it. But but I, I wanted to to keep things uh, simple for my first game uh, mm-hmm. and not to to have uh, uh, too many complicated um, components. Uh, so mm-hmm. I uh, just learned the process of uh, creating the game and uh, uh, the shipping and the whole Kickstarter. Uh, Business, so I'm really happy that I had a mo- modest first game in uh, in both uh, uh, numbers and uh, complexity of uh, the production side. Because you also made things like um, <clears throat> you had a simple kind of attack and defense game, but you also had the kind of the giga mode as well. Yeah, which is like you had kind of like two. You basically you had to buy two copies of the game, and then you made like a huge, massive castle, which was pretty cool yeah. when it came when it came to um when it came to the stretch goals did you did you have that many stretch goals kind of planned out did you did you expect it to kind of do three times the kind of the the project target or were you were you really quite surprised that it ended up doing so well uh yeah i had a uh, pretty low target goal i think it was uh, around Four thousand dollars or something, yes. yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I, uh, the total funding was around. Uh, let me see, uh, around twelve thousand dollars. We we got in, uh, yeah. so that was very good. Um, yeah, uh, I I re- I really hope that I, I I wanted to have a, a game that I could have a really low funding goal uh, the first time. Mm-hmm. So I. I just had the, the core uh, core components. Uh, I was sure to uh, to include only that, and then build uh, build uh, on top of that with more uh, units and uh, and uh, and stuff. So uh, I had I had planned all the all the stretch goals before I launched. Yes. Okay. Okay. Did you um, 
Have you ever thought about going back and doing kind of like a a second printing, a second edition with kind of different components? Or are you 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 quite happy with the way everything kind of turned out? Yeah, it's it's tempting, but uh, the the first print run only had uh, around four hundred units, and we just sold out. In, uh, in I uh, delivered my final copy to. Uh, uh, to a guy in in Essen, so uh, uh, the oh, first are you okay? yeah the, the first print run is now uh, done. Uh, so uh, we'll we'll see in the future how the how the community responds to it, and uh, we'll take it from there. I'm not I'm not totally against it, but uh, yeah, we'll we'll see what the future holds. Okay, okay. Um, one of the things that was really noticeable about about it was the the box art. Yeah, was um, was lovely. It was beautiful looking, um, and that was um, I know the guy's name. It was uh, is it Jose Pena? Yeah, who did the art? Yeah, yeah. Um, are you keeping him for the kind of the next game? Donning the purple. Uh, no, uh, I I am uh, uh, I'm not uh, not not that uh, that I not have uh, nothing to do with him. But <laughs> his yeah. art is his art is amazing. But uh, I was just uh, um, discovering more artists uh, mm. when I was researching um, donning the purple, mm-hmm. and I uh, saw some art from a guy called. Uh, uh, Ueri, I, I don't know how to to pronounce his name. Ueri Lefebvre uh, or something, and he okay. had uh, he had done some uh, uh, really cool uh, Roman themed art, and I contacted him, and he was uh, on board, and he has done uh, uh, a lot of art for the for Donning the Purple, which is my next game, uh, because and 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 in that game we have more more art pieces and uh, and stuff. But I, I wanted to continue the uh, tradition, if you can call it that, to have. Uh, an amazing uh, box art uh, because mm. that is a uh, is a good way to to uh, to get noticed out there. I think. So donning the purple is, I mean, it's what it's what Petter did next. But I mean, the difference already between what you can see in Kill the King in terms of the components, the number of components that you've got. You've got player boards in Donning the Purple. You've got counters in Donning the Purple. You've got little um, pawns in Donning the Purple. I see that um, you have sneaked in a little map. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there is a. The map is made from a, a guy from Holland. He has a. He has a fantasy uh, uh, map uh, designer. He has made a lot of uh, maps for. Um, uh, for uh, role playing games. Um, oh, right, okay. And he is he is also a, a, a cart, cart, uh, cartographer. I don't know if that's an Yeah, English, yeah, no, English actually, yeah, 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 yeah. So so uh, he we, we have really d- d- done a, a good and long uh, <laughs> process with uh, making this map. Uh, it is really detailed and uh, it ju- turned out just the way I wanted it. And uh, and um, it it is the map over the Roman Empire. And mm-hmm. uh, and in uh, almost every province there is uh, there is a building that uh, was famous in its time, uh, and we have made a, a small uh, drawing of that uh, on on the on the map as well. So it's uh, it's really detailed and um, in the, it's yeah it's quite good I think. So were you what were you doing? Were you um, were you having a bath when you came up <laughs> with the idea for donning the purple? Were you you know? Have a shave, <laughs> clipping your toenails. <laughs> no, <laughs> I, w- I was, I was. Uh, the what kind of personal hygiene thing were you up to? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it it was it wasn't uh, so uh, exciting as the uh, the shower. It was I was uh, no. out, out out walking my dog and listening to a podcast, right. okay. uh, a podcast about uh, the history of Rome. All right, and um, uh, and while I listened to that, uh, I. Uh, thought uh, ab- about w- why people wanted to to be uh, the emperor of uh, the Roman Empire because it sounded like uh, problems all the way. Uh, every, every, everybody hated you and they wanted to kill you, and uh, uh, there, yeah, there was problem uh, problems occurring all over the empire, and uh, you had to 
make sure you had the line of succession after you die and all of that. And uh, it, it and it inspired me to to make Donning the Purple to to create the, that same same feeling uh, like the the Emperor had back in uh, back then. Um, no, um, so you. So do you want to tell us? Yeah, I mean, do you want to tell us a little bit about the the kind of how you play it, the mechanics? Because it looks there's cards here. <laughs> I mean, you've got you know you've got um, it's not just the case of here's the maneuvers. I mean, you've got little. I mean, it looks like you've stolen some breath mints as well because there's little white discs. Yeah, <laughs> it's either that or you've been in the paracetamol. Yeah, um, you've not just got. Is that you've not just got one dice? You appear to actually have um, four six-sided dice, yeah. and also um, a four-sided dice as well. So you've you've kind of gone from the simplicity of kill the king <laughs> to the complexity of trying to run the Roman Empire. So yeah, I mean, do you want to tell us a little bit about the? The kind of the mechanics behind it. Yeah, sure. Um, uh, Donning the Purple is uh, an asymmetrical uh, King of the Hill game uh, with a bit of uh, worker placement in it. Um, each player leads uh, a powerful family in ancient Rome, uh, trying to get the most victory points during four rounds, uh, mm-hmm. where each round is one year in the Roman Empire. Mm-hmm. Um, and the setting is uh, that the previous emperor was killed by his own bodyguard. Um, and uh, it has left a power vacuum that uh, the, the families in Rome are now are trying to fill. Um, and if your family member becomes the new emperor uh, and manages to hold the position, he can earn a lot of points. But uh, he will also become the target of the other players as they will try to dethrone him and become the new emperor them, themselves. So uh, if you're on the top, you're uh, getting a lot of flack from the other players and, and the the citizens of Rome as well, so it's a uh, it's a stressful a stressful job. But if you can manage to okay. keep the pe- people happy, you can uh, make it big. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So is it kind of is there a little bit of risk reward? Do you do you kind of gain more points if you are the position of kind of I guess as Caesar? Um, do you kind of have more points, but you have to deal with all of the the flack that comes with it as well? Then. Yeah, uh, uh, the emperor gets points according to the the happiness track. Uh, the happiness track right, here okay. shows the happiness of the Roman people, and if mm. that uh, that marker is high, you get a lot of points. And uh, but if that uh, marker is low, you uh, get uh, only one point to each round, or p- perhaps you're uh, dying is if they are really angry with you. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so there's actual murder involved as well. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, and another uh, important uh, aspect of the game is um, uh, your stamina, because uh, I, I said it was a worker placement, but it's actually a, a stamina placement. Uh, oh, really? Because uh, when you on your turn, you are uh, doing different actions, and uh, each time you uh, do action, you, uh, you you are using one of your stamina, uh, and when you are out of stamina, you die. Or your family member dies. I mean, and, really? if, and if you are uh, the emperor and you die, you have to make sure that the the, the title of emperor stays uh, within your family. So we have to make sure you have an heir and uh, and stuff. But uh, do you prioritize that over feeding the people? Perhaps. Uh, <laughs> so we have to make uh, some tough choices uh, as the emperor. Okay. So you've got a choice to. Do different things to keep the people happy, or do things to kind of keep, basically, kind of keep yourself in power. Yeah, I know. So on some of the player boards you've got, I'm looking at the player board just now, and there's different. There seems to be kind of like different challenges on the player board. You've got ones that say famine, like in region one. Yep. You've got the obviously the different the kind of the different main cities as well, but I'm looking at the the kind of the player boards for oh. the emperor and he's got like the option to build an aqueduct um they've got an option to um basically collect enough grain so the provinces are kind of fed um your stamina seems to be little white discs i take it you put those little white discs where you're wanting to kind of they help you kind of control what you're 
what you're doing at the same at the same time. Yeah. This is a big this looks like this is this strikes me as somebody that has played kind of a lot of kind of strategic kind of war type kind of games. Um how long I mean have you been playtesting this a lot of the local group? Have you had a lot of people kind of you've played it with a lot of people so far? Yeah, we have been playtesting it a lot uh, and um, the the playtime of it uh, varies uh, around 70 to 90 minutes. It depends uh, if it's your first time or not. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, uh, I was yeah. kind of I was ex- kind of expecting you to say it's going to be about five or six hours. Yeah, based <laughs> on what you've <laughs> said so far. But yeah, <laughs> Axis and Allies. It's just like oh, it's just a small game. It's only going to take three and a half kind of four hours. Yeah, to kind of go. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe not my next game, but, but because I think it, it it's harder to market a game that's the last six hours. I think so. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll start yeah. small. <laughs> have you? I mean, um, how far are you? How close are you to kind of um, finishing off the game? Would you say? I mean, is it is that it? Are you completely happy with how it is just now? Do you still think there's kind of like a reasonable amount of work that you have to do? Or are you, you know, where are, where are you? Are you ready? Are you ready? Could you go ahead and launch, if you are ready, could you go ahead and launch the Kickstarter campaign kind of like tomorrow if you wanted to? Uh, yeah, uh, the, the game itself is uh, is ready. I think we just have to tweak uh, some small amount until it's ready because, uh, or, um, uh, or, or the art, we have to do some small fixes there. But the, the, mm. the core mechanic of the game is complete now. We... We uh, we agreed on that uh, after the uh, um, the play testing we did in Essen, uh, and everything worked out fine. And um, and so yeah, the the game mechanic is uh, is complete. And um, but <laughs> but we can't launch tomorrow, I think, because the, the Kickstarter page <laughs> is not complete yet. <laughs> what were you doing? Get on with it! Yeah. My goodness. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, uh, the the plan now is to perhaps launch. Uh, sometimes in uh, in in February or March uh, next year, yeah. um, okay. and we are sending out uh, the review copies to reviewers uh, at the end of this month. Uh, so yeah, that's where we are now, basically. Have you had to? Um, have you found with the? I mean, when you did kill the king, I think what you did was you said, okay, if you want to have a. You can have a play of the game if you want to do. There's a print and play version. Are you running a kind of a print and play person version for kind of reviewers this time, or are they kind? Are you kind of expected to actually send over a almost like a fully working copy? Has that has that kind of changed for you? Uh, yeah, we, uh, on Killer King we ha- only had the three review copies, and uh, mm-hmm. this time on Dawn and Purple we uh, are. Uh, putting together eight, uh, oh, right, okay. eight copies, so uh, we have upped our game a bit uh, there. Uh, and of course, if if uh, if we are out of re- review copies, we will uh, we are happy to send uh, print and play files files to any re- reviewers that uh, want to test it. But uh, the plan is also to uh, once one of the reviewers are finished with the game, they will send it to to the next reviewer. So uh, we will have more. Reviews than just eight, uh, yeah. hopefully. Yeah. So my, my yeah. plan, my plan is to have lots of reviews and and previews on on uh, Kickstarter page. Yeah. Have you felt um, just with the current climate on Kickstarter that you really have to be doing a lot of marketing before you consider kind of launching? I mean, you are. I mean, we're only in November. If you're talking about kind of February, March. Yeah. That's a that's a kind of a long that's kind of a long lead time. Yeah, you're, you're kind of given. <laughs> have you? I mean, have you given it so long because of your because ex- you're okay? Well, let's touch into this other. You know, this other part. And we'll come back to kind of donning the purple. But yep. um, you've been speaking to a lot of kind of Kickstarter creators yourself. Yeah, you've been on interviewing kind of like a lot of you know a lot of designers, um, and you've been doing that for is it is it almost. Um, it's almost a year now, at least, isn't it? Yeah, well, I started uh, a Kickstarter <coughs> interview blog. Uh, uh, I think it was yeah, perhaps November last year or something. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. 
Uh-huh. Um, I, I was inspired by uh, uh, the the almighty uh, James Stegmaier, <laughs> uh, yes. and he he uh, I I read his blog when I um, and I still do uh, when I was creating uh, Kill the King, and he one of his advice was to just reach out to different uh, uh, Kickstarter creators and yeah. just ask them one uh, one tip. Uh, for, uh, ask them if they only had uh, one tip to give you, uh, and I and I did. I uh, talked to uh, Peter Blinkern at the inside the, yeah. the box, uh, yeah. Yeah. and some others, and I contacted them through the Kickstarter messaging system, and uh, they kept on giving such great advice. And I thought, why not share it with everybody else? And yeah. so that's the idea of the where the idea of the blog was born. And then mm-hmm. I started to interview different, uh, different, uh, yeah, Kickstarter creators about uh, all the things they did before and during the the campaign, and it uh, <laughs> uh, it has hasn't stopped yet, and everybody is uh, sharing so much uh, useful information. So uh, yeah, it's it's really uh, useful to to talk to to talk to all the creators and. Uh, and I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to each week posting a new uh, new interview. Yeah, because you've had some. I mean, you've had some really decent names. In fact, you had the um, you know the head of the actual Kickstarter section for kind of tabletop. Yeah, on uh, yourself. Yeah, you? Luke Crane. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah, his his name was that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember looking. I remember looking at that and thinking two things. The first one was. That's really cool. Petter got the head of the <laughs> kick, tabletop Kickstarter, and the other thing was, I can't believe he's got the head of Kickstarter on. <laughs> I was just, just like, what? How did he get him? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he won't even return my emails. What's going on here? How did he manage to do that? But have uh, has this? I mean, running the interviews has that kind of taught you a lot about how you're going to be approaching Don in the Purple because. You've kept up with the noise since, to be honest, since the kind of the campaign was wrapped up for Kill the King. Donning the purple was the next thing that kind of, pretty much kind of the the noise and the publicity for Donning the Purple kind of came up pretty much straight after that. In fact, I remember, well, okay, I've got, um, I mean, I've got... I guess we, st- you first made me aware of what you were doing with Dawn in the Purple. Um, must have been it's it's it was very very <laughs> it was very very early on this year, pretty yeah. much. If I'm checking, I'm looking at my. E- Let me just check the email history. Do, 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 do. I think we had a chat kind of almost like March. April of this year and you said well listen this is going to be the next game can we have a chat about it and this is why we've kind of we've pushed it back and pushed it back because yeah. we were aware of it. there wasn't much point in talking kind of in August September time if the campaign wasn't going to be running kind of like in in, in uh, if it was going to be February kind of March but you've kind of kept the noise coming up have you um have you had a lot of have you had people kind of contacting you from the original Kill the King campaign kind of interested in what you're kind of doing next i mean are you still are you still communicating are you still reaching out to the people that originally backed kind of kill the king uh yeah my, my mar- marketing plan for for donning the purple uh, uh the first entry i put in there was perhaps uh, january or february this year and i have <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> yeah and i have performed that uh, every week uh, up, on, up until now and i will continue to doing that uh, all until launch and perhaps or or hopefully until uh, we have funded but um, uh, yeah it, it's it's the, the thing that i had uh, learned uh, from all the interviews that i have to that marketing takes time and not yes. just not just not just that you have to market yourself you just have to contribute to the community and talk to everybody about uh, what you are doing and commenting on other stuff and yeah. uh, and and uh, and continuing to nurture the, the your backers from your previous games uh, and 
and since they backed my game, I think they are pretty cool. So I, <laughs> I enjoy uh, talking to them and uh, posting stuff and uh, getting feedback and uh, stuff. So uh, yeah, it, it's a pleasure talking to to uh, all my previous backers and if mm. any, anybody of you are listening I, I, I love you <laughs> oh that's yeah. so <laughs> that's so nice yeah. um, have you decided on a kind of a price tag going back to Dawn and the Purple have you decided on kind of what the backer levels are going to be or are you still kind of figuring them out yeah yeah. I I think the the price for uh, for the um, for Dawn and Purple will be a uh, uh, approximately forty nine dollars per copy, <clears throat> plus a little bit of uh, uh, shipping on the top, but that won't be too much. Uh, yeah, so that is uh, uh, Killer King was thirty seven dollars, I think, but uh, but uh, that had uh, uh, not so much components as uh, Donning Purple. So no, but I, but I still no. think it's uh, it's a fairly uh, good price for all of the stuff you are getting for. No, yeah. Yeah. I mean it's a it's a very very good price con- considering the um, the kind of the the bar for Kickstarter seems to be hitting about the ninety nine dollars. Yeah. If not kind of creeping over that, which that's kind of I don't know. That, I mean for me that's kind of getting into kind of unaffordable kind of territory. I think um, I think having it at a certain level is fine, but. I think once you're creeping over to like, I've seen a lot of bigger Kickstarters now sitting at about 120, 130 dollars in order to kind of get a respectable kind of deal, and it's kind of like, hmm, that is that is a whack of money to yeah. be paying out for something kind of. So it's good that you've kind of that's a really that's a really kind of reasonable kind of kind of amount. What's next for you though? I mean, are you already looking at what's happening after? kind of donning the purple or are you waiting maybe until you get inspiration the next time you're say washing your car or going for a jog or paint, <laughs> painting the house yeah I, I, <laughs> I, I pick up uh, inspiration all over the place but uh, yeah I have a couple of projects that I am uh, developing uh, mm-hmm. but uh, none of them has come uh, so far that I want to Share too much about them. Uh, I can. Just, oh, it's okay. Yeah, I, I, uh, one um, of them is about the time travel. I can uh, say. Uh, oh, okay. And, and that is a rather complex uh, yeah. subject, so I have to do that uh, co- correctly if it's going to work. But uh, we, we will see. Maybe it uh, won't uh, be a game after all. But uh, yeah, uh, time will tell. Have you thought about um, going into kind of like a skirmishing kind of war uh, war gaming kind of game yourself? Uh, yeah, uh, but uh, I haven't developed it uh, far enough yet to <laughs> all right, <okay. laughs> to do uh, have uh, have anything on it. So, yeah, kind of guessing all the guessing all the right things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean donning the purple. Um, as I say, I've been aware of his exis- existence. You know, as early as kind of February of this February March of this year. Yep. So it looks really, really interesting. Uh, interested in the subject matter. I am <clears throat> ever since um, I played a copy of um, I think Viticulture. Yeah. Anything kind of workers worker placement kind of resource management is kind of becoming more and more my jam. I always thought I was a a dungeon crawling boy from heart because of the days of Hero Quest and Space Crusade, but it turns out a uh, I'm a guy that likes nothing more than placing discs or cubes in certain places and getting rewards yeah. <laughs> in its kind of place. So, yeah, so that kind of thing, it kind of, um, it kind of, uh, it kind of definitely interests me. Um, for people that are wanting to keep an eye on what you're going to be doing over the next, you know, three four months, where can we find you on the inter- interwebs? Uh, they can go to tompetgames.no or just uh, search on uh, Tompet Games on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and all all that stuff. Okay. So it's T O M P E T. Yeah. Games.no, yeah. which is obviously for Norway. Yeah. Simple as that. Or they can go Facebook. Also, if you if you're on the UK tabletop games. Um, page you often you often turn up on there. Yeah. Do you are you on the board game geek group or the board game group on Facebook? Do you frequent there at all? Yeah, I I, I try to s- step lightly in, in in that group as well. 
you have to be careful with uh, what you're posting there, but uh, I, I, I enjoy exactly. my group, so yeah. <laughs> you just go in and just run past and go, Settlers of Catan's rubbish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or just go off. No, I saw, um, I saw, was it yesterday, I saw somebody had decided to put up a post of mechs versus minions and they'd actually posted photographs of what was in the sealed box. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> They kind of like had a quick. I said, "You better take that photograph down because otherwise the hounds of hell will be after you, my man." Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, check out uh, TompitGames.no. Search for it on uh, Facebook. Are you on Twitter as well? Yes. Tompit Games. Yep. So search for it on there. Um, keep an eye out for Donning the Purple. Forty nine dollars. That's and um, believe me, I've seen the screenshots and it looks very very interesting it's an interesting subject um and certainly worth kind of um kind of keeping an eye out on and obviously keep an eye out with us because we will definitely be reporting on it um and we'll be getting petter back on when he's actually running the campaign to do a quick kickstart on quick start on the kickstart just as a little catch-up chat yeah sure I, I, I really i really like those segments by the way uh, as a kickstarter geek i think that's really an interesting uh, thing you're doing there with the quick starts so yeah that's very good yeah i think the most i think the interesting ones are the ones where we get them kind of on at the beginning and then we get them back on again once they've kind of um funded again so i think uh, we had um i think the most recent one was richard keen who did Dinogenics. Yeah. And we're going to try and get him on quite soon just to talk about what he thought of the campaign because we spoke to him on his first day and he just, I think he just funded and he was like, I can't believe I funded. And then I think he he ended up, um, he ended up doing $144,000. Oh, wow. (laughs) He just did. So he was, you know, how are you feeling? Slightly chuffed. (laughs) I must admit, I'm slightly... um, Slightly annoyed with him because he didn't do the thank you video wearing a dinosaur costume, but that is that is for a discussion between me and him. Yeah. Um, if you do want to keep an eye on what we are up to, um, go to Google, search for We Are Not Wizards. You will find us on Twitter at We Are Not Wizards. You will find us on Facebook at We Are Not Wizards. We are on Instagram at We Are Not Wizards. We are on YouTube because our lovely host Podbean automatically put all our podcasts onto youtube but you can find us anyway at uh, we're not wizards tabletop podcast as well we're on spreaker we're on stitcher we're on Acast, we're on all the usual all the usual places um pod knife they're new they're up and coming those guys need a little bit of support check them out and see what they're up to if you like what you've heard tonight then Drop us a review on the podcast place where you get your podcast because that would be very nice. If you like us even more, if you head over to Apple Podcasts and drop us a subscription. And if you like us even more than that, then feel free to drop us a review. Remember, as we always say, and it's a good joke and I'm sticking with it, but don't give us a 10 if you are going to review us because that will make us big-headed. And don't give us a 1 because that will make us cry. Give us a five, because that's in the middle. It is average, and we are decidedly average. Well, I'm average, but Mr. Petaskanka Olsen, he's rather fantastic, and you should check out his um, his interviews that he does with Kickstarter creators, because they're very, very good. Um, check, keep an eye out on Donning the Purple when it comes out. Um, He's a project, just keep an eye on him because it looks like Dawn and the Purple might be something very, very special indeed. Petter, thank you for coming on. Yeah, thank you for having me. <laughs> you know, it's been it's been brilliant having you on. It's been one of these ones that I've been looking forward to since we kind of arranged it um, several months ago now. Um, so I really, really appreciate your time. I wish you the best of luck with the campaign and you shall be coming back on. Yeah. You shall be in that hot seat within the first couple of days of the campaign launching just to see what uh, how things are, are going. Um, there's only a couple more things to do. Um, first of all, thank you for everybody that has uh, been supporting us um, of late via through Facebook, Twitter. Um, 
We've reached some really important milestones recently and uh, we are, me and Colin, are very humbled by what's been happening with the show of late. Um, the auction that we did with Jamie Stegmeyer um, looks like um, our last bid was about $550, which I believe means that we've got about $1,000 going towards um, Rachel House, which is the children's hospice, which is about 10 minutes from where me and Colin live. So that's fantastic. So really, really grateful for everybody who helped spread the word and get involved in that. Um, but there are only two more things to do. Uh, the The first thing is to remember that we are many things, but we're not wizards. Are we wizards, Peter? Oh, no. How do you say we're not wizards in Norwegian? Uh, vi er ikke trollmanna. <laughs> yeah, I, I said it in my, in my uh, dialect from the middle of Norway, so oh, it uh, right, sounded okay. uh, a bit strange, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so, but we're so remember we're many things, but we're not wizards. Are we wizards? Are we wizards, Peter? Vi er ikke trollmanna. <laughs> Love it. Absolutely love it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and the second thing is to say goodbye. So it's a goodbye from the rather wonderful, the fantastic, the amazing Mr. Peter Schanke Olsen. Goodbye, Peter. Yeah, goodbye. And it's a goodbye from me. Remember, stay safe, roll sixes. And uh, you may have killed the king, but keep an eye out, watch your back plan your resources and make sure the people are fed if you're wanting to be donning the purple in the future but until the next time goodbye <laughs> <laughs>